very good evening friends meeting after a gap of five six days again with the materia medica session and we were discussing regarding the second year bhms remedies and last remedy of this is the kali sulfuricum again a 12 tissue salt a susler's famous remedy for the third stage of inflammation so we have discussed the first stage of inflammation from susler's remedy the perum first thereafter the second stage inflammation from 12 tissue is the Kali Miraticum, and this is the third stage. The earlier part of third stage of inflammation is covered with the Kali Sulfuricum. So, this remedy has multiple aspects where we can use this in our day-to-day -day practice. And I, I will share, going, I will going to share you cases where I used to use and how I used to think about utilizing the Kali Sulfuricum in practice. Kali Sulf being a one partner is sulfuric, sulfur dominates the Kali over here. And that's why if you go with the Kali, the modalities are always hot modalities. The patient is hot patient, aggravated by warm, warm application, warmth or warm environment. So this is very typical of the sulfur which happens to be there. And in even in symptomatology, you're going to find the sulfur domination. I have utilized this remedy for three important cases with which I will going to share first skin manifestation. Because in the skin, the typical one word which is which comes in the pathology or pathogenesis of this Kali sulfuricum is the desquamation. Desquamation means scaling which happens to be there, a dead scales which comes out of this of these personalities very easily. And it has a wonderful effect on psoriasis. Many times I have utilized this remedy and joined to the main constitutional remedy and it helps to ascend the process of cure. This is a wonderful remedy for the psoriasis cases. And many times it itself sufficient to tackle the cases. If the psoriatic eruptions are there, lot of scaling is there associated with yellowish, yellowish discharge through the eruptions. And it is little bit offensive stinge and aggravated by heat. Then I always used to think about this. Kali sulfuricum has that psoriatic patches with a secondary bacterial infection and where scaling is associated with the yellowish pus and lot of itching over there. I have used this remedy for such a condition and second important thing for which in the I have used this remedy along with mezerium or vinca minor for the um, scalp complaints, the seboric dermatitis or a psoriasis of the scalp, this remedy has a wonderful effect. It has very close association with the scald head where there is a hair falls from specific area on the scalp associated with the itching and a pustular eruptions over there. Kali self oozes a lot of discharge over there along with the hair fall in that specific area. So, it is a good remedy along with vinca minor, along with mezerium, or sometimes it itself is sufficient to cover the whole pathology of the seboric dermatitis or the scalp psoriasis. So these are two important skin conditions for which I used to use or think about the Kali sulfuricum. And one more condition where I used to think of Kali sulf, if there is a severe rattling cuff, Generally, what happens whenever we see the rattling cup, we have to think about the antim tart. But antim tart, two important things are there. There should be a thick coat, white coated, along with the dullness, drowsiness is there. That is characteristic of the <coughs> Kali cell. Um, that is characteristic of antim tart. But when you think about the Kali cell pericum, it is it has a severe rattling chest. It is acute rattling. Along with yellowish discharge, yellowish expectoration, which happens to be there. So, the yellowness of the tongue, yellowness is the characteristic of Kali sulfuricum. And that's why tongue is also showing the yellowish, yellowish appearance. In antim tart, it is thick white coated. In epicac, that is clean tongue. In epicac, patient is thirstless. In epicac, it happens so acutely. In Kali sulf, it accuse, it develops subacutely or at the third stage of inflammation in antim tart it take it takes a little bit period to develop the rattling 
So great rattling cup, if you see, and the first, if it is yellowish in appearance, with yellowish tongue, then always think about the Kali Sarpiritum. I Yes, Madhu, I used to use this in biochemic forms very commonly, very commonly. 6x. I'm using it in 6x, not generally in 30, very occasionally 30 to 100. If the patient is purely of Kali Sarpiritum, then I used to think. This is not a well-proved remedy that from homeopathic point of view. That's why you never get so much of mentals and all those things. But it has its own significance in these three important conditions. And that also, it is a good remedy for the eustachian cutter. I used to use this in eustachian cutter where there is a yellowish discharge happens to be there from the ears. And there is an obstruction feeling in the ears. Kalimur, whenever the discharge is plastic-like second stage of inflammation, Kalimur. But when discharge starts appearing, it is early yellow. It is not like a chocolate yellow. Chocolate yellow, it goes in favor of calcarea self. Kali self is the earlier stage. So this remedy is very, very useful remedy in eustachian cutter also. So these are the cases with which I used to approach this remedy. Let us see, open the Borix Matra Medigan. Let us see and learn this remedy from the Borix Matra Medigan. Kali Sulfuricum, it is the potassium sulfate. Elements accompanied by the profuse desquamation. First word is very important from Borix Matra Medigan. Desquamation is scaling. Papudra nikna, dead scales nigundana skin varche. That is the desquamation. And desquamation is the process which is common in the psoriasis. That's why its close association is with the psoriasis. So, first sentence itself defines the action of remedy applicable to the latter stage of, stages of inflammation. That means third stage of inflammation. On day one, we have discussed that there is the first is aconite, second is ferrum first, third is Belladonna and fourth is gelsemium in the first stages of inflammation. Then second stage of inflammation, when you think, then you have to think about the calimuraticum first, followed by a pulsatilla, which enters into the second to third in between stage. Immediately followed by is the Kali sulfuricum, and after Kali sulfuricum, you get the calcarea sulfuricum. So this is depending upon the inflammatory stages on which you can think about the remedy. Yellow mucus and serous discharge. See, this is very important. Yellow, yellowness is characteristic of this remedy. Mucus and serous discharge. Both mucus discharge is also and serous discharge is also. They are profuse and intermittent. Intermittent means it is not continuous. It happens to be there, then there is stop, then again it happens to be there. Has been found of much use in oxaluria. Oxaluria is urine contains oxalates, more crystals. So this has a very difficult feature, oxaluria. It is pathological general of this remedy. Head symptoms. So see, mind symptoms are not mentioned because it is not well-proved remedy. Head, rheumatic headache beginning in the evening, bald spots, dandruff and scald head. Scald head, is it, it is nothing but the falling of hairs with pustular eruption scaling over there happens to be there in uh, on the skull. Uh, it is a rounded patches which happens. Either it is seboric dermatitis, either it is ringworm of scalp, or either it is psoriasis, scalp psoriasis. Rheumatic headache is the terminology comes again and again. Many, many people have a query about it. Rheumatic headache is nothing but it, it affects the scalp also. It is the headache right from the nape of the neck and it involves the scalp. It involves the skull basically. Scalp, it, is, it involves the skull. And that's why the patient feels aggravated either because of the pressure, either because of the um, amelioration because of the pressure. But it is related with the directly with the um, skull and it has a typical rheumatic like pains which are intermittent in nature. That is rheumatic headache. Then no eustachian. Uh, ear complaints, eustachian deafness, very, very important remedy. When there is, it is obstructed because of the pus formation over there and that pus is very typical yellow matter like hydrastis. This remedy is a very important remedy. Generally, if the, if the discharge is not yellow and it is, if there is a blocked sensation, 
then we have discussed in last lecture kalimur is the most important remedy in fact susler himself have said that kalimur is the best remedy in the orish sands this is what he has said and kali self is again one more important remedy notes colds colds with the yellow slimy expectoration nose obstructed smell is lost like natremia engorgement of nasal pharyngeal mucous membrane mouth breathing snoring etc remaining after the removal of adenoids underline this sentence many times what happens the patient they goes for adenoid removal of adenoids because these children snores and even after doing the surgery the snoring continues then he says there it is the remedy which which covers that aspect even after adenoidectomy if you if the snoring remains this remedy has wonderful action face x in heated room epithelioma if it is the tumor of epithelial tissue generally happens to be there around the lips so this remedy has a twofold existence it has zoric features it has psychotic features and it has syphilitic features also all three mixed miasmatic remedy stomach tongue coated yellow and slimy tongue is coated yellow and slimy insipid papi test gums are painful burning thirst nausea and vomiting lower feeling dread of hot drinks see problem is related with the hotness the heat is there because sulfur element is there and it dominates the kali and that's why this personality is always gets aggravated by everything in hot either hot application either hot drinks either hot weather the kali self features used to gets aggravated and abdominal features again gets aggravated because because of the hot drinks abdomen the colicky pains abdomen feels cold to touch tympanic tense yellow slimy diarrhea constipation with hemorrhoids sulfur is mentioned over there and this is sulfur future again over there but not too characteristic there are not not so much of characteristics which present so it is very difficult to prescribe kali self in the abdominal complaints depending upon these much pieces unless and until it has been associated with the chief complaint and chief complaints are related with the skin chief complaints are related with the um, uh, respiratory mel gonorrhea so this is psychotic remedy gonorrhea discharge is slimy yellowish green orchitis inflammation of the testes be gonorrheal it is orchitis is it is a gonococcal orchitis so it is psychotic miasm dominates over there gleet gleet is nothing but the yellowish discharge which happens in gonorrhea is called as gleet female menses are too late scanty with feeling of wet in the abdomen there is metrorrhagia metrorrhagia is nothing but the intermittent menses so there is flow for certain days then there is stop then again after 4 5 days then bleeding starts sometimes there is in, again it stops again it appears and this intermittent menses is the characteristic which is called as metrorrhagia respiratory this is very important what is said in respiratory coarse rals tremendous rals you can chest auscultate even patient cups you can find it out over there with your um if, with your ears you can listen the sound rattling of mucus in the chest given in italics and written tartar emetics very close association with tartar emetic post gripal cup post gripal means post viral grippe is nothing but the viral infection at this was the terminology old terminology for the viral fevers where cough cold and fever comes this is the terminology which used to post gripal cup special in children bronchial asthma with yellowish expectoration cup worse in the evening and it hot atmosphere croupy hoarseness croup it is pharyngeal secretions and pharyngeal secretions along with hoarseness is there this remedy has typical action on respiratory system hepar and spongia you get but in spongia it is more more of a Mm, hoarseness is more marked more of a dry character of cough is more marked in spongia 
in case of hepatocel yes definitely there is crow pharyngitis is very typical with the hepatocel hepar weather is cold weather where cold is disturbing your skin you are wearing the sweaters and mufflers and caps and that is typical weather where hepar plays a vital role extremities pains in nape and back of limbs so pains in nape then back and in limbs worse in the warm room shifting wandering pains shifting pains is the characteristic of kali family kali by chromicum you have a shifting rheumatism so this shifting and that's why it is very close or chemical analog of pulsatilla pulsatilla is also having shifting pains kali self is also having shifting pains pulsatilla there is aloish mucoprolan discharge kali self is having aloish mucoprolan discharge so they are having very close relationship and that's why pulsatilla is called as vegetable analog of the kali self uricum fever rise of temperature at night so tem generally fever appears at night intermittent fever with yellow slimy tongue so yellow slimy slimy manje gul gulit soft and that yellow slimy tongue is the important thing which you have to ask only thing is that if you observe yellow tongue just check whether patient has consumed tea before that generally because of tea it becomes yellow so it should not be because of any anything if it is persistent then it has a significance skin see the psoriasis first word which has mentioned arsenic thyroidinum ars iodide hydrocotyl these are very important remedies in psoriasis eczema burning itching papular eruption nettle rash polypi nettle rash is nothing but the it is like urticaria polypi on the skin epithelium seborrhea seborrheic dermatitis that's what i am thinking fevers ringworm of the scalp and beard with the abundant scales this is this is a wonderful remedy for the scaling of so whenever it happens to be there you have to think about it this is too important one should not miss this that if scaling is marked with aloish mucoprolan discharge think about the kali sulfuricum first modalities worse in evening and heated room this is sulfur modality and better in cold and open air open air desire for pulsatilla again here also open air is ameliorates so that's why it is called as a chemical analog of the pulsatilla relationship compare kali sulfuricum chromico alum of chrome 3x produces in nasal passages uh, very fine threads from the septum to external wall affections of nasal fossae and hay fever chronic colds sneezing red watery eyes irritation of mucous membrane but it is not well proved remedies so um, unless and until it is well proved you should not try then pulsatilla kali bicromicum and natremur these are three remedies he has mentioned to compare with the kali sulfuricum pulsatilla very close association kali bicromicum the um, stringy discharge which is generally mucoprolan discharge which happens in kali self as well as um, uh, kali beach uh, second important modality where kali self and kali beach is shifting rheumatism that's why it it comes closer but um, what we see in kali bicromicum it is acute syphilitic rheumatism which is characteristic of kali bicromicum there is a shifting of pains but syphilitic rheumatism that is the word if you open the boix mater medica and again goes through it you will find this is syphilitic rheumatism natremur very close association with the discharges in natremur dose what he mentions is 3rd to 12th potency so 3rd to 12th potency is the dose but my suggestion is always i used to use this generally in cases of the um, in uh, in the biochemic doses and it is the remedy for biochemic uh, biochemic remedy many times in such types of cases 30 generally i never used to use very very occasionally because 
constitutional features you never get. You get it on the basis of Schussler's pathophysiology. And second important thing, it is, I, as a adjuvant to many um, constitutional remedy in case of skin manifestation, in case of respiratory manifestation. And that's why biochemic form is very useful and 6 6 potency is very useful. There is one word which is used over there that is the famous FAVUS. It is chronic inflammatory dermatophytosis characterized by scotula formation. It is generally um, very occasionally present nowadays. It was um, eradicated throughout the world. Uh, it is not commonly seen, but rest of the features, the psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis, these are the things which you used to get very commonly. So in day-to-day -day practice, many times we get the cases of psoriasis because psoriasis is incurable from allopathic point of view. They always comes for homeopathic treatment. Think of this remedy with the psoriasis. Second important thing for off and on, the rattling of patients comes to you in your opinion. Chronic bronchitis, COPD, where rattling is much more. Think about the Kali Sulfuricum in biochemic doses in repeated or in repeated biochemic doses. It is a wonderful remedy to tackle that. Even a pus formation or um, the pustular discharge from the in the expectoration that can be tackled with the help of Kali Sulfuricum. So a wonderful remedy which we have finished from the um, Borix Matra Medica. I think we have finished nearly all the remedies from second year syllabus. From tomorrow onwards, we'll start with the third year's remedy and which are there in your syllabus. And those are again important remedies from the practice point of view. So it will be useful for both. It will be useful for the students as well as it will be useful for the practitioners. So both aspects we're going to learn in the from the next lecture. So that's all for today. Thanks a lot. If you have any query, we can have a chat. Otherwise, we conclude. Any question? So we'll conclude. Good night. And we'll meet tomorrow again with both the sessions in tomorrow. Yes, Brinda, do you Thank want you to? Sir. Good night. Good night. Okay.